you guys should never rush projects and this is why hey guys welcome back to the channel my name's mike for anybody who's new huh. uh, what? or new to watching my channel hey and if you uh if you ain't subscribed hit that subscribe button like i always say it does us a lot of good and it don't cost you nothing but the reason why i'm making this video right now is i got in a little bit of a hurry and when you rush your projects and you don't take your time you run into things like this let me show you well you could see my fence line here i don't know if you noticed this but let's just go off this post right here and you can kind of tell we get a little wonky so guess what i didn't do it right i rushed it it was the first string of t post of many that i drove in and i didn't string line it no god please no no i'm and now i have to go and pull these posts out and string line it and do it again because if you could tell I don't know if you can look, these are straight, that one goes out. They're kind of back and forth and wonky, so. I'm gonna have to take the tractor, take the front bucket off, figure out how to hook a strap up, and then yank these things out of the ground because um, I can't run fence on this right here. I mean, I could, but it's gonna look like crap. So for anybody who was wondering why I shut the tractor down and shook the, the hydraulics back and forth, well, the reason for that is because T -t today, Junior, I get hydraulic leaks. I get hydraulic leaks always on this first hydraulic fitting down here. Let me get away from this tractor. She's warming up still. So a subscriber told me he has the same problem with the BX2380 and the hydraulics leaking on that quick disconnect. He said the best thing you can do, possible scenario because that thing just sucks naturally, take all the pressure off of it and then put it in free floating mode before you start the tractor. For those who are wondering, that's why. So what I'm hoping to do is to wrap this around the T-post like that and use friction around here and pull it out of the ground. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> If anybody was wondering about the strap I was using, it's just a typical anchor strap. So usually I call them cradle straps, but you run through here, you have an anchor point, and you can get a hold of something and uh, cinch it or cradle it. Now what I was using is I wrapped it around like that, around the front of my tractor, uh, front attachment there, and I use this spot to get on the lugs to pull up and pull stakes out of the ground. So it works pretty good um there's a lot of methods like the tire method and everything but when you got a tractor why not use what you got so there you have it nice string straight it's going to stay sturdy we'll use it as a guide to make straight posts and run a straight line how straight are you next is we're going to put down the tape and uh Start hammering some posts because we want these things five feet apart. We don't want them staggered and looking funny.
So I wanted to go over something real quick with you. When driving T-post in, you have to pay attention to how they drive in because depending on how depending on how they were cut on the bottom here, they will rotate as you hammer them down. So if you want a straight T-post, you need to figure out how much they turn when you start hammering a couple down and then offsetting it when you stab it in the ground. Because when you start hammering it, it will slowly start rotating straight. Just food for thought. <sighs> Much better. So all we gotta do now is start messing with some fencing. going with a welded wire fence I know I talked about this before going with the sheep and goat fencing but this right now this is more cost effective for me and it's not so expensive that I'd be afraid to pull it up in a couple years anyway so like I said before we are planning on buying these acres next to us so if we do that I'm gonna want to go with a little bit of fencing if not take all this down anyways and build a shop over there but that's in the future so I've kind of decided that I don't want to spend too much money on the fencing right now and get something that's going to get me by with just chickens. And you could put goats in this too. I'm not going to say it's going to last a long time if you put goats in it, but it certainly will hold up. I thought it was going to be like an Indiana Jones scene with the uh, Temple of Doom. <laughs> Except there was a roll of fence that'd be chasing me. <laughs> the kid, kids just got back from school. You running Hi. around? Uh-huh. Let's go check on these goats. Okay. There's the boy. Oh my gosh! He was Poppy! <laughs> now you can you can't tell that he was. Hey dude. Hi buddy. Oh, now I chased him. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's my goat. He's my goat. You wanna go inside give him a chase again for the camera? Sure. But I have my nice shoes on. Okay, well. But I can still do it. Hold your turn up to step in my poop. Post. Mom got the post. Yeah, they're in the back park, back seat. Oh, back in the bed. You gave those goats a run for their money. <laughs> Look at that. See that? No. See a snake? No, dad, no. See it right there? I see a snake. That's what keeps mice away. Those little guys right there. Is that a gardener snake? Nope, that's a rat snake. Um, poisonous? No, not poisonous. Those are the guys that keep the mice away. We want that guy in our garage, in the shed. 
You got to pick them up and put them in the shed. I'm good. You can pick them up. I'll video tape you. <laughs> All right. Let's get them in the shed. Oh, he's in strike mode. Put him in the shed. He's gonna strike you. That's very well possible. So we're gonna let him go inside here. There you go, bud. <laughs> All right, let's let him do his thing. That looks so well, guys, the days aren't as long as they used to be. So. This fencing is just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. So I will see you then. All right, well, needless to say, we ran the first line of fence. Uh, I just kinda wanted to get it out of the way before I brought you guys along. So here's the problems I've ran into. Keeping the top and bottom middle straight as possibly can be has been a little bit challenging. Because one, I am working on a hill that does this. So to get the gaps fixed, I gotta pull the fence down in certain sections, secure it to the T-post, and then it causes a problem with buckling on top. I'm not really sure how to go about it, but I just kind of been tightening as long the way, but I'm getting a lot of, a lot of this. And it just, I just don't like it. And then I got my little helper here. <laughs> So our next pull is gonna be from this post down there. That's right, it is on a hill. Pulling fence on a hill for a novice like me is extremely challenging. So by no means is this a fence building video to a how to because this is my, uh, this is my first time pulling welded wire fence. I'm trying to do short runs right now so I can uh, minimi minimize, so I can minimize as much as that up and down as possible. So the problem we're running into is the fence is pulling downhill, which is fine and dandy. It's actually coming out straighter than I thought, but we're not pulling low enough because the board is too, uh, too long. I didn't put the fence low enough on the board. I'll remember that next pull. So boy's gonna do what he does best he's gonna dig that out and we're gonna try to bring this down a little bit it's hard to find good help these days so wherever I can get it I'm gonna take it that's why you have me <laughs> that's right that's why I have you but we're gonna finish up doing the rest of these and as you can tell the sun's starting to set so yet we're gonna have another episode of me finishing this out so what you guys can expect on the next episode is all this fence will be ran and we'll be working inside that chicken coop and slowly introducing these chickens so i'll see you guys on the next episode bye bye I'm